Okay, so it is 3.43 a.m. Monday, March 1st here in Japan. And I just spent the past six minutes drawing this fungal cell. There is a lot we can talk about regarding the antifungal meds. I'm going to try to be very concise, give you maximal value without making this a 37 minute clip. Okay, so we have this woman with HIV, uh, immunocompromised. She's got a high fever and chills. This description of high fever and chills is actually quite relevant for fungal questions on USMLE because most uncomplicated fungal infections we treat with azoles. Okay, most. A lot we can talk about, but I'm just trying to be very broad to start. If the infection is uncomplicated, we tend to think we're going to use an azole here, like fluconazole, first line. Okay. However, if a patient has high fever and chills, chills means rigors, that can imply a disseminated fungal infection with fungemia, emia, suffix blood, so fungus in the blood, uh, or a CNS infection. Okay. And we, for serious fungal infections, use amphotericin B classically, okay? Once again, there's a lot we'll talk about, but you should, in general, to start, think uncomplicated. Fluconazole is a good first line. We use azoles for lots of things. If very serious fungemia disseminated CNS, we're going to look to amphotericin B. That's our start. So this patient, we think fungemia, she's sick, she's got fever and chills. Now, she's been in hospital for uh, the past four weeks, treatment for endocarditis uh, with IV antibiotics. This means, this is, this is insinuating that she has a fungal infection because being on broad spectrum antibiotics for several weeks will knock off your normal flora and increase the chance of a fungal infection, classically candida, okay? I've seen people who, even if they're scoring high, they can miss this detail in a vignette. I'll say, why does the patient have a fungal infection? And they're like, hmm, no idea. And I'm like, well, they've been on antibiotics the past like four to six weeks, right? And they're like, oh yeah, it's not hard. It's just easy to overlook. So I'm telling you, this, this means fungal infection for USMLA. Now we keep reading, blood sheep agar, four micrometer elliptical purple budding organisms are grown. This is how candida is described on one of the step one NBMEs. So we talk about these buzzy descriptors like listeria, tumbling motility, salmonella, swarming motility, right? This uh, four micrometer elliptical purple budding organisms and sheep blood agar, this is candida, okay? I mean, low yield, high yield, it's what it is. It's on the NBME exam. We can't argue with it, okay? So this cell... I'm just going to walk us through, uh, keep things high yield. Choice A is the fungal cell wall. This refers to caspofungin and mica fungin, which is our correct answer here. So mica fungin, caspofungin are in the drug class called echinocandins. Okay, echinocandins. They inhibit beta-1,3 glucan synthase, which is important for carbohydrate synthesis, okay? So beta-1,3 glucan carbohydrate synthesis is inhibited by caspofungin mycofungin. That's our cell wall. That's choice A. That's our correct answer. Caspofungin and mycofungin are classically used for invasive aspergillosis and invasive candidemia. Now, I just said a moment ago that for severe fungal infections, we classically use amphotericin B which is true. So if this question's not asking about mycofungin, like if we only have this top paragraph here, nothing else, and you were to say, Michael, what drug could we probably use? I would say amphotericin B. But the question's clearly asking about mycofungin, okay? And if you were to say, well, when do we use caspofungin, mycofungin? The answer is classically invasive infections like aspergillosis or candidemia, okay? And that's what this patient received. Now, choice B refers to amphotericin B and nystatin. They poke holes in the ergosteral membrane. They target uh, porin proteins, okay? Amphotericin B, uh, classically cryptococcus neoformans meningitis. You start it with flucytosine, and then you taper with a year of fluconazole, correct, a year, fucking long. Uh, nice stat, and I should I should also say uh, amphotericin B, it causes hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia. It can also cause amphoterable, quote unquote, 
uh, which will present as a hypersensitivity-like reaction with fever and chills. Even though you're treating an infection that has fever and chills, amphotericin B can cause amphoterrible, which presents as fever and chills. Okay, kind of weird, but hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia with amphotericin B. And uh, nystatin is going to be used as a mouthwash for oropharyngeal candidiasis, oral thrush. It can also be used for, topically for vaginal candidiasis, vulvovaginal candidiasis. A, a, a quick point I want to make without digressing too much is whilst we use nystatin mouthwash for oropharyngeal, oropharyngeal candidiasis, we use oral fluconazole for esophageal candidiasis. Clearly, you, a mouthwash isn't going to treat an esophageal infection, right? I've seen students screw that up. And looking at some of the other answer choices, uh, D, the conversion of squalene to lanostrol via squalene epoxidase. This is inhibited by terbinafine, okay? So terbinafine is a patotoxic, must check LFTs first. It is used topically for tinea pedis, okay? And it's oral for onychomycosis, nail bed infections. That that's the those are the classic uses for terbinafine, okay? Choice C is our, it refers to our azoles, so like uh, fluconazole, itraconazole, ketoconazole, voriconazole. So uh, they inhibit 14-D-methylase, which is the enzyme that converts lanostrol to ergostrol. Azoles inhibit P450. Well, ketoconazole classically inhibits P450. Ketoconazole is also anti-androgenic. It, it can inhibit an enzyme called desmolase. And... Uh, they're also, the azoles are classically hepatotoxic, same as terbinafine, okay? So you check LFTs before commencing oral azoles. Topical azoles like clotrimazole, myconazole, used for tinea corporis, all right, ringworm. You can use topical azoles for tinea pedis. Um, as I just told you, topical terbinafine, that's classically tinea pedis. USMLE is not going to give you both and force you to choose. If they did, answer is terbinafine. I'm mentioning this because I've seen one question on one of the NBMEs where myconazole, topical myconazole is the answer for tinea pedis, but they didn't have terbinafine listed, okay? It's annoying to tell you, to try to tell you things concretely and then give you many exceptions. I just want you to be informed as to what's on the exam. And uh, itraconazole is classic for sporothrix schenke, okay? Uh, our rose thorn, uh, sporotrichosis, can, it can ascend as lymphatogenous sporotrichosis. That's going to be oral itraconazole. Voriconazole, used for invasive infections, similar to caspofungin, mica fungin, or aphotericin B. But voriconazole can cause arrhythmia. And choice I, you're probably like, what the fuck? This refers to griseofulvin. Okay, I've seen uh, the microtubules. Griseofulvin is a microtubule inhibitor. I've seen them drawn like this uh, on one of these illustration type questions, okay? So even if you, even if uh, these don't look like microtubules to you, if we were to like literally sit and chat and discuss the antifungals and we come to griseofulvin, you're like, well, it's a microtubule inhibitor. And I'm like, well, which one of those looks like it's a microtubule inhibitor? You're like, well, that's choice I. It's like, okay, that makes sense. So griseofulvin uh, oral for the patient only is for tinea capitis. Okay, that's important. That's on 2CK Family Medicine. They'll show you the tinea capitis. And then they'll, the answer is literally just oral griseofulvin for patient only. The wrong answer was for classmates as well. And griseofulvin can induce P450. Okay, so that's the concise discussion of these antifungal agents. All right, really high yield for USMLE. Uh, I've had students uh, mention having these on the exam. They're all over the NBMEs, okay? So that's some concise value for you. Obviously, I'm going to make more clips. So if you liked this, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.